Welcome back guys. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this Martin box using four fence pickets. You can make this with $8 worth of material. But it's big. It's a big birdhouse. And the reason why I chose this for our Make Money with Woodworking series is because there is a ton of money in birdhouses. And Martin boxes in particular because no one makes the wooden ones anymore. You cannot hardly find them. They're all the plastic, the cheap plastic ones. You know, they're everywhere and they're ugly. When people come up with something like this, they can be used as a decoration or a Martin box. They will pay premium. These things are going for hundreds of dollars if you can find them. This is actually one that my son made, but in the past, I have made them and sold them for $350 a piece. Those are probably about three foot tall. This one's not quite as big as 24 inches long, but a very large and impressive Martin box. And like we've discussed in the past, people love birds, they love anything to do with nature and home decor. So if you're looking for something to build on the cheap that could make you a lot of money, this is where it's at. And as always, if you're gonna build one, build several because this one's been claimed, the prototype's been claimed, and the ones that I haven't even built have already been claimed. So. And at the end, I'm going to announce the winner of the game that we played in our last video. Super fun, tons and tons of guesses, but there was only two correct guesses. I actually had to draw for the winner. And if you are interested in more builds like this, do not forget to smash that subscribe button and follow for more. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started on this project. As always, I will be putting the full cut list in the description, as well as link to my Etsy shop for the full plans for this build. And we're gonna start with just cutting out our parts, everything that's on the cut list. Now, if you would like to paint this project, you do not have to, you can just stain it, but if you'd like to paint, let's go ahead and do that at this step. Anything that will be exposed, so all of the bottom boards, the outside walls, and the posts. And for this type of distressing, I like to paint everything black, let that dry, and then go over it with a nice thick coat of white. Now while that's drying, let me show you how I lay out my shingles. You will need nine slats at an inch and a half wide, and one slat at two and one eighth inch wide. This wider slat is going to overlay our roof. So for five of our slats, I'm gonna measure out an inch and a half spacing. And for the remaining five, I'm going to start at three quarters of an inch, half of an inch and a half, and then measure out an inch and a half spacing. Put these two together and it will give the offset of the shingles. Now let's get our saw set up to cut our shingle slats. We're gonna start by building up our back fence at least two inches. What this is going to do is allow for the blade to pass completely through our slat while we're cutting our shingles. And now we're gonna use our depth stop. We've talked about this before. A lot of people do not even know that your saw has one, but most likely it does. And for some reason, if it does not, this can be done on the table saw. And I'm setting my depth stop up for 1 8 of an inch. So basically, every mark that I make, every cut that I make, will actually go in one eighth of an inch and with our backstop, it will allow it to pass all the way through leaving a completely straight line. Now that's all we have to do is follow the marks that we made earlier and we have shingles. Not like the really painful chicken pox type of shingles, but you know what I mean, roof shingles. And depending on your comfort level, you can do more than one slat at a time and this will speed things up tremendously. Okay, so now we're going to stain our roof, whatever color that you would like, or you can actually paint it. I chose to use Early American by Memwax and used like a dry brushing technique. It's just kind of a rough hit or miss. Now let's set our table saw up to cut the siding marks that will be on our gables and all of our wall boards. I'm gonna put my blade on a 45 degree angle and raise the blade up to 1 8 of an inch. With our fence set at one inch, we are gonna run all of our parts through. And if you noticed, I've left all of my gables as a square or a rectangle. That way I can cut my miters later and it's much easier to run through this table saw. So then once we have our cut on all of our parts at one inch, we're going to move the fence over to two inch and repeat this process. And then we'll move it over an inch at a time until we have five siding slats in our material.
and with this 45 degree angle it actually gives this overlap look just like siding and now I'm just distressing this material down and with distressing it's all personal preference I like to just knock off the top of the white just enough so that the black that we used earlier can show through and we're going to start by assembling our base, our bottom. So to do this, I'm going to be using a pocket hole jig. So I'm going to be putting some pocket holes in the back of one of the two parts. And it helps to tighten up your bit. So get that put back in. And we'll put pocket holes about every six inches or so. So whenever you're setting up the depth for your drill bit, set it at one half of an inch instead of five eighths. Some of this material is not a full five eighths thick. And we're just going to attach our two bottom boards. And for extra support, I'm just taking a 5 8 piece of scrap, turning it on edge, just to help prevent anything from warping in the future. Now with that done, let's go ahead and put some pocket holes into our two sides and our front board. Now these are only going to be on the bottom. This is what will attach to the bottom board holding everything in place. The back wall will not need these because we will be making it removable for clean out. Now let's go ahead and cut our holes in our front wall. And we're gonna space these out at two and a half inch increments from the very edge. And then after measuring down to the center of your board, let's go ahead and take it over to the drill press. If you do not have a drill press, you can easily do this just with a spade bit and a drill. Since this is going to be for Martins, I'm using a one and a half inch bit. Now let's start our assembly. We're going to be starting with our front and our side posts. You'll have four side posts and that's all that I'm doing is using some glue and some one inch nails. You'll put one on each side of the front and then you will attach each side. Now I'm using exterior wood glue here. So once all of this sets, it's not going anywhere. Now let's attach our remaining two corner posts to our two side walls. You will also need three dividers and you'll need to put pocket holes in the end. I put two in one end and one in the bottom. You'll see where these come into play. Now let's attach our walls to our base and we're just going to be using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Now here's where our dividers will come into play. They will actually be making our nesting boxes. So we're going to put them in at 5, 10, and 15 inches. Now at the end of the season, we need to be able to clean this birdhouse out if you're actually using it as a birdhouse. So in order to do that, I'm just putting four screws into the back wall from the side posts. Now we're just gonna take our gable parts, which are gonna be labeled J, and find center, which in this case is going to be five and a quarter. And we're going to mark our lines all the way down to the corner. This just happens to be 45 degrees. Now with those cut, we need to be able to attach them to our side walls. So we're going to throw in a couple more pocket holes. But if you notice the pocket holes are offset, this is for a reason the rest of this gable will be overhang. Now let's just glue and install our two gable ends. Now it's time to install our middle board W. This will actually overhang as well as cover part of the boxes. And I'm just gonna be using glue and brad nails for this. Now we need to install our front posts. You can either distress this to match the rest of it, or you can leave them natural to kind of match the roof. I chose to leave them natural. Actually, my wife chose to leave them natural, but we are gonna be lining them up with the center board. Okay, so you'll notice that the center board is inset a bit from our gables. That is because if we lined it up perfectly with the edge, the corner of the center board would be above the roof. We do not want that. So 
Just line all of your posts up with the edge of the center board. Next, we'll install our middle board in, and then once that is installed, we will go ahead and cut our center gable. The center gable will actually hold extra support for the roof. And we will do that in the same way that we did for our outer gables. Now let's go ahead and put our shingles on, and I'm gonna start with a two and eighth inch shingle, and this is gonna be on the front. I'm just squaring it up and only using glue and brad nails. And then we will simply alternate back and forth between the two shingles that we had cut. And now for the back. You can see where our first board will actually nest underneath of the two and an eighth inch board. So make sure to leave that overhang whenever you first put it on. And the super cool thing about these type of Martin boxes is you can decorate them up as much as you want. I've decided to go ahead and put some post braces in just because this style of house would typically have them. And there you have it for eight bucks, you can make this. And that is awesome. So, enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you were able to take something away from that video to help grow as a woodworker, grow as an entrepreneur. And this is where it's at. Things like this, low cost, high profit items. That is where the money is at. And here is the winner of the Axle Electronic Muffs. The winning number, was well, 379. There were actually two people within the time frame that guessed the 379 correct answer. There's all kinds of people around it. And then we had a drawing for a winner. So hit me up, let me know where you're at and where to send this to. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Our brag board is blowing up. Our Patreon community is growing and this channel is growing along with it all. Until next time, get out of your comfort zone and push yourself to be a more creative woodworker and a better entrepreneur in the process. See ya. So, or, or if you're the type of person, person, now I've got a lift.